All right, so a little background. About two and a half weeks ago, the CPC um, asked the select board to call a special town meeting so we could pay an additional $50,000 towards the town hall historic rehabilitation loan. There was additional CPA money that was uh, provided to the town, um, so they have this money that's available. And they felt that they didn't have a large number of projects this year, so they wanted to put this money towards that debt. Um, so that's Article 1. It would allow um, the town to make a payment of $50,000 from the unreserved fund balance, um, to make an additional payment on the one-year note for the town hall project. Mm -hmm. The reason we need to hold a special town meeting is because the one-year note's due on April 18th. So it needed to give us time. Uh, we need to have time to go out to bid for another one-year note before April 18th. And if we try to do it at April 30th town meeting, it wouldn't work too late. Um, the 550, Article 2 is for $550, and that's just to pay the issuance cost of a one-year note. That's in relation to Article 2. And then Article 3, um, for the, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $500 from available funds to pay the unpaid longevity bonus of a town employee from the past two fiscal years. There was one town employee who did he get paid their longevity bonus from FY2017 and FY18. Mm. Just all through the tracks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions yes, for Brian on any of the three articles? Or any other comments on the three articles? Do I have a motion? Make a motion we approve the air, all three articles. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have a number of guests tonight. We we do. Yes, we do. Some who schedules got shifted around, so we want to take those folks first so that they can I think we do you on a day. Sure. Okay. Who's up first? How about how about we let the South County Senior Center folks <laughs> present and then they can leave. Uh, uh, or they can stay for the rest uh, of the meeting. Uh, <laughs> It's an open meeting, yeah. and it gets, it gets better as we go on. <laughs> um, so hi, I'm Christina. I'm the uh, director. Uh, I would say, I guess still new. It's been about 10 months, but yeah, new oh, director. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah. I was told you do have a copy of our uh, budget so. proposal. Pretty sure. So have your seen. material from last meeting is in the cultural yeah, recreation yeah, service yeah. portion. Public health. It's in special time. CRS dash five. I do have some copies, not enough for everybody, but if someone needs one. CRS CRS five? CRS five, yeah. What the heck? CR or C G. <laughs> all you got is GG? Yeah. Yeah, it's all I got. That's all that came to me. We're in the Georgia. Okay, I'm going to look on with him. Oh, I have another copy. Um, we can share one of them. <laughs> First of all, 
um, thank you because um, I, I know I'm aware that we um, had to come I think it was in Nove November and ask for um, some additional funding to um, make it through fiscal year 19 so first of all that's much appreciated <laughs> uh, we're sort of we're sort of still um, in a transition all year I guess I'd call it trying uh, trying to get things back on track. Um, we're finally at a place where we have real costs, like we're really seeing what things are actually costing and, and able to budget for that. Um, where it was, it, was, it was kind of done the opposite way before that um, less money was asked for up front, but then the bills came in and it was a lot, there was a lot more that was needed and then the gift fund had to be, which were, his donations had to be used to pay for things like electricity, which that's not the point of the gift fund. <laughs> so um, we're finally at a place uh, that, you know, these are real numbers, I like to say. Um, so on the, on the version that I at least passed out, um, it, sh it does show the la fiscal year 19 budget in the first column and then right next to it, um, what is being asked for um, for appropriation for fiscal year 20. And then the next two columns after that are our two major funding sources. Um, so we basically get, we receive money for our operating budget from the towns, um, Fund 291 and uh, Fund 432, which are from the state. Now those numbers are not guaranteed, um, and in fact, uh, the, the 432 actually I got word what that number was going to be and it's actually a little lower than I even anticipated so um, these are kind of best guess based on history and what they've given us and anything they've indicated um, so it's broken down in those three way how you know different items are paid into the using those three uh, sources of income um, we do have an increase <laughs> Um, it's a few of the items. Um, first of all, the sa my salary um, is currently at a 34 hour, it's a position 34 hours a week. It's being increased to 36 um, with the goal to, to eventually be at 40. Um, but we understand obviously that's a big jump all at once for budgetary reasons. So we'll do it over hopefully a couple of years. Um, so that was one of the items that did increase. Um, also, some of the facilities costs, such as electricity and gas, the bills have gone up for that, so that's a higher number. Um, we're trying to offset it by, um, we did cut janitorial and um, snow removal landscaping with the hopes that we're working with the town of Deerfield that they, um, can find another way to take care of, because we're using private companies' contracts right now, but we're, we're, working, <laughs> we're working with them to try to get a, um, see if they can do a, more of that, in which case, um, you know, the number would be lower. Um, but we cut it anticipating that we're gonna be able to do that um, in order to cover the items that we have no control over that have gone up, like gas and electricity. Um, do you own the building? Deerfield, yeah. The town so of Deerfield. Deerfield owns the building. Yes. Okay, and you're approaching them yes. for a maintenance of the building. Yes. Okay. Because um, as of this, like I said, it's private. You know, we have a private company that does the landscaping and the janitorial. Is you know, it's a private individual. All of that yep. right now. So we're working with them. <laughs> See what we can do. Um, and then just a couple, you know, a couple items I, I, I did lower um, in the hopes that, you know, maybe we will get more funding from the state than I anticipate. Or if, I, if there is a reason to go into a gift fund, things like um, supplies for our annual picnic would be an appropriate reason to use that money. However, like I said at the beginning, paying for ongoing electricity, et cetera, is not what the gift fund <laughs> was designed to be for. So, yep. 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 specific questions I can answer. How many um, how many Waitley citizens um, attend a frequent membership? 
how do you account for that? Yeah, and, and I'm smiling because I, I know, you know, that obviously makes sense why you're asking. And it's actually somewhat hard to answer even when we look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that frequently come, like on a weekly basis, um, I, I'd say maybe about 12. Out of the total of how many? On, again, on a weekly basis, um, maybe 10 is better, better, but more about about 30 people. Can I just say one thing on that? I'm Sharon Pichard on here. One of the things we talked in one of our budget meetings was transportation. Yes. You have people here. That want to come. That want to come but we don't have transportation to get them. Mm -hmm. Sunderland has the same problem. Yeah. If we, we could come up with something to get your seniors to the center, we'd see a lot more people out there. Yeah. I'm part of the triad program, Maria's too. Um, we do the outreach for seniors, and we're really starting to dig into your town <laughs> and realizing there's a lot of seniors in this town, and we want to get them there. Yeah. But we need your help with transportation, too. Do you think they want to go? I, I actually frequently, uh, you know, I won't say every week, but, you know, say a couple times a month, I, I, I'm on the phone with somebody that is from Waitley or, or Sunderland, and, and they want to come to the center. They want to come to events, and they're, you know, they're <coughs> hoping we have a van, which we don't. <laughs> um, and so then, you know, we're looking at what are the options of getting, you know, getting you here, and it often results in there really just isn't a way to do it. Um, so, Fred, do you have any comment about that? To the select board, um, are they aware of this? Are they um, open to uh, to that discussion? No, and yes. Good. Um, <laughs> I'll sure answer. That's all I know. It's the first day here, so. Well, I guess it would make sense then that uh, the select board um, maybe open themselves up or some process so that people can call in <coughs> so that we know what the need is out there and whether mm -hmm. or not we should invest in that need. Right. Um, right now, yeah. I mean, I appreciate all the anecdotal stories, but. Right. No, I understand. You know, until we get some pretty good numbers behind right. that, um, it'd be hard for us to say it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Or Doesn't some days more, some days going to be more popular than others, or the time, the timing of what's going on. Well, yeah, there, certainly some <coughs> days are more popular than others. There's yeah. a special event going on, or <laughs> Fridays tend to be more popular because we have bingo on Fridays. Yeah. Um, so there, there's various reasons, yes, that people are calling or wanting to get there um, doesn't mean they're looking for we're open Monday Wednesday Friday you know it doesn't mean they're looking for all three days to be able to get there but they want to get there have you approached uh, businesses in town let's say I'm just gonna throw out Yankee Candle maybe they would put a logo on the side of a bus and stop at the candles before going <laughs> in and back. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a it might be an approach yeah no that's a good idea yeah. i mean did you have any outreach like okay. like that any funding or any mostly uh, the part i've been focusing on since i've started is having conversations with PDTA and FRTA and trying to figure out and that's still that's ongoing my conversations with them trying to figure out how to best you know maybe open that up more that they can <coughs> service more people sure. um, and, it, and it is a problem also um, with having both you know a relationship with both because not only are we looking for ways to get more people to the center we'd also you know we want we schedule trips and things, mm -hmm. and it'd be nice if we could all go on sure. in one van, yeah. but um, like FRTA, you know, won't take someone that's supposed to be on PVTA, you yeah. know, or from it and all of this. So there's, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 is in, it is in talks, and, and like Sharon said, I know Triad's looking at it too. Um, so it's out there, it's acknowledged as a big problem. We're, we're trying <laughs> to yeah. see what we can do. Let's see all in the window on Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Nine to two. 
And, and I do want to say, although those are our official open hours and we offer meals on those days, um, I'm there five days a week and there is stuff going on five days a week. There's multiple classes and people, even, you know, today was a Tuesday. I had three different people just come in and just wanted to hang out, essentially. So. Yeah, I think it's a, a good heads up for you people being on the Finance Committee. I think our goal is in the future, very near future, is to keep that center open five days a week. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that have no but, and they tend to use the center more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's warming area for them this time of the year. In the summer, it's cool for them. Um, socialization at that age is a big thing, sure. especially when you don't have anybody in your house. Yeah. So they tend to hang in more and more. And like Marlene, oh, like a Marlene on the brain, uh, Christine <laughs> says, um, they come. Uh, it's a comfort zone for them too, mm -hmm. yeah. and they a lot of them just they'll wait until she's going to lock the door. Yeah, yeah. no, that's exactly what happened this morning. Um, I'm not necessarily there at 9 a.m. on the Tuesday, Thursday, because we're not officially. I, I get I got there maybe 9:30, and, and some and so there was a gentleman. He's like, and I'm like, oh, can I help you? He's like, I, I just wanted somewhere to go and just yeah. you know I didn't have anything to do today. And I'm like, sure, come on in. I mean, so, yeah. And that's part of also one of the reasons the goal is to get my role to 40 hours. I am there five days a week, but that would be, but to officially have it open five days a week, um, you know, really would re require a, officially <laughs> a full-time position, so. Well, um, any, any thoughts or... Uh, just, just I, I, I was just thinking that we get some proposals about how you would, you know, how many people we're talking about, in our case in Wakeley, and what alternative you might think of for how to get those people to and from the center, and then what those alternatives might cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you looked at or uh, talked to other centers to see how they do it. A lot of other centers actually have their own <coughs> van, their own vehicle, um, and some of them they just use it for to and from the center, but actually a lot of centers even use it to schedule um, other trips to if someone needs to go to a doctor's appointment, etc. Um, we do not certainly have that in the budget, I mean that's a big item if we added some. Certainly, it would be. <laughs> I'd love to have that, but you know, it's a it's a whole other discussion. But doesn't FRTA have that service? Provide people. And they do to help. Doctors and, to doctors yes, they and have some what they call rapid response. Um, however, there's limit, <laughs> and they'd be much better at explaining this. But there's limits to <laughs> who they can get, how often they can bring someone somewhere, where they're limits to what kind of place they're bringing them to. Um, so there's there's all these and then of course there is you know it's minimal but there is a cost involved for the individual um, and I and I have had individuals say even though um, it, it's certainly not ex expensive I've had people say you know I can't do that so um, I would uh, well there's a couple of things here. okay there's the emotional side of this which <laughs> Everybody wants to take care of everybody, you know, and that's and, and that's a great thing. That's a community, and you know the seniors are a big part of the community, and we obviously recognize that. Um, there has to be an economic um, the justification has to mm -hmm. be there, and I think that rests on your shoulders as to how you present further increases or asking for more funding, right. uh, so that certainly lies with you, mm -hmm. um, and that's about what we can do. You know, I don't, uh, any any issues with the current no. number? No. No. You know, I, I, I <coughs> good. And what we do is we get all the numbers in, yeah. we look at them all, okay. and, we, and we sit down again and we say, does this fit? Right. You know, does it fit to the number that we would like to see our tax rate right. be at, stay at, or go to. 
Yeah, I certainly appreciate that, that, but, that but what you have to do, yes. Does anyone else from senior have anything more that they'd like to add to this? No, not really, um, other than the fact that our goal is to open that center five days a week. Just to give you a heads up. Yeah. And, and we you have been looking at transportation to it. options, but yeah, the transportation <coughs> it's ongoing. Um, yeah. it's, it's a lot of money. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I think um, our, our senior population is growing rapidly mm -hmm. in our towns. Yeah. yeah. If we no all question. look at our numbers. Yeah. And I, what is your population in Whiteley right now? Are we at 13? 15. 15. Mm -hmm. uh, 16. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah. yeah, we're grown. I mean, it's close enough. Yeah. yeah, and I'm looking forward to getting the 2020 census numbers because that should mm -hmm. really show, if, you know, a, big, a large increase of uh, demographically. Right, demographically. Yeah. Uh, do you, is there special funding you could apply for if you had somebody that would provide this service? Other than other than coming to the two towns, yes, for transportation. Um, so specific or county funds you can use. Not specifically for transportation. Um, not that I'm aware of, anyways. Um, <clears throat> part of the part of the two, the two main grants that I mentioned at the beginning that we get funding from. Um, part of that includes mileage and stuff for our staff because we have an outreach coordinator and stuff yeah. to be going to people mm -hmm. um but then there's all kinds of insurance issues you know that brings the, you know about her actually driving people to places so um so it's it's funding for mileage but not actual transportation because there there is a limousine service out of operates out of deerfield and if you approach them to help out on some days of the week is there special money you could use to pay them to do that or grants to pay that? No, no. no. Unfortunately not. <laughs> it's like now the maple syrup season is yeah. uh, uh, coming about and uh, the seniors love to go there. So we have to carpool. A bunch of people will gather and say, okay, I'll take this amount, this amount, yeah. this amount. Yeah, that's how we but can do our and, events. And that's how we're trying to move them around now, but now we're getting an overflow mm -hmm. and not as many people volunteering, maybe for liability. Right, reasons. it's a liability issue. Sure. So put them <laughs> in their vehicles. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe an, an initiative to yeah. get a transportation vehicle for you. Yeah. Yeah see what kind of funding you can bring in from right. those sources. So, uh, okay. okay, anything else before we wrap up? <laughs> okay, we want to thank you for coming in. Thanks for bringing extra budgets. <laughs> yes. Always important, always appreciated. <laughs> well, thank and, you for uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. It is embedded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I feel better now. I think we should go to. <laughs> you feel better, Dan? Uh, about recreation, assessors, police. Is recreation Count here? Court, uh, or you do? Which which way you want to go first? Oh, oh, yeah. Why don't we go recreation? Go home first. <laughs> um, first, because. Um, he is a volunteer. I know that. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? Good. See you. So you're taking over the reins. Huh? Yes. Is that right now, Justin? Um, okay, I gotta find this. Just hang with CRS me. CRS2. What did you say? CRS2. Oh, okay. CRS2. This is like. This is like. This is like. Death Con 5. It's right where we were. Back up. There where you are. Upside down. Recreation Services. Your CRS one in your hand. Right yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. Hang on. I, I'm right I with tricked you. him with a double-sided printing. Oh, <laughs> I didn't catch your name. Oh, excuse me. There it is. Oh, Justin. In the flesh. <laughs> I'm Justin.
Tim? Jim. Oh, Kirk, Jim. Nice to meet you. Yeah, why don't we introduce, yeah, that's, do you know everybody here? Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy. Okay, nice to meet you, Dan. Jim. Jim. Bob Fajinkiewicz. Bob? Paul Antea. Tom Maher. Sean? Tom. 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 Bob Bryant. Tom. Fred Barron. Fred Barron. Commission. These six are on the finance committee. Fred's a select board member. And so, you know, these meetings typically we meet together to one allow for free exchange of ideas, communication, but also saves you to have to go to one meeting instead of going to see the select board or going to see the finance committee. So kind of uh, expedite the process that way a little bit. And uh, I don't know if you heard, but, you know, how we run this finance committee is we don't do any voting on any budgets here and now. We kind of wait till they're all in, take a look at what the numbers are, and then make a decision, can we accept the budget as is, or we have to return and make amendments to it. <coughs> you. So, that's how it is. Um, okay, so when did you take over? Um, probably, I want to say about a month ago. Really? I would say that. I, I don't know exactly how long ago. Who did you take over for? Uh, John Edwards. Well, mm. you got a lot of stuff to clean up, I'll tell you. John's still on the committee. He's still on the committee. Is he? He's going he's gonna to do okay. CPA stuff and uh, new yeah. Good luck. Jonathan submitted this budget um, before uh, Justin took over, I think, right? Yes. So yeah. Okay. He's picking it up. But it doesn't hasn't changed very much. No. Let's see. Okay. You want to do? Are you familiar with it? Are you? Um, are you I mean, you know, I, I was I was looking it over. I, I came honestly. I kind of it's more of an education process for yeah. me. So I came and I looked at the fuel and I you know kind of I, I came and I asked. Um, the town administrator, kind of, what is, you know, what are the fuel costs? Um, I, w I was kind of, you know, electricity was pretty straightforward. Um, I um, looks like there's some building maintenance, um, and then the Hurley Park field. I'm guessing that's also maintenance. Blue school, blue school maintenance, fire school maintenance. The blue school, I'm guessing, is not there, so that's. No. That's gone. Right. Well, can I, can I just add, interject one thing? Yep. The town has a the select board uh, signed a license agreement with um, with the purchaser of the blue school, so they have they, they have the ability to use the field for one more softball season. So okay. there may be some costs associated with that, but okay. um, after that, it's mm -hmm. probably not an option for the town. Okay. Um, what about the? Um, what about the fire station field? Yeah. Okay, so that's five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. And are we backing off the Waitley Elementary School gymnasium because that's in the educational budget, or any any sense of that? I I, I don't really have a sense of that. I saw that it it was zeroed out the last two <coughs> times around. around the gymnasium. Well, the recreation committee uses that gym um, for it's basketball. For years, it's what? It's been zero for since yeah. 2017. I think the school Yeah, 2017 was 250 and it's right like there. Oh, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It wasn't expensive. Yeah. I think they had an expense line at one time um, to split the cost for the max. Yeah, around the outside. At, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. That was a capital. That was a I mean, the taxpayer owns it. If you're going to do anything there, they're going to pay for it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, so the total rec budget. Do we have any questions that, or thoughts, um, comments pretty straight about the budget itself or about the Recreation Commission? Can I, can I add one thing? Yeah. Sure. So you recall that um, with the loss of the of the blue school field, the rec commission has a, I think five thousand dollars from from the CPC, CPC administrative funds, which can pay for design work. 
to create a design <coughs> for a softball field likely at Hurley Park mm -hmm. um, to see if there's enough space and what that would take. <coughs> um, so that we'll pro probably be moving forward, but I would think most of that project would be CPA eligible. Or would they put a softball field at Hurley? It's actually, if you drive <coughs> all the way to the back end of the park, we're not, yeah. Over on that side, I think, is what, what I heard. <laughs> yeah. They still, I think, they still have to like survey all that. I've seen it. I, I've seen a scale drawing, and it will fit. Um, <laughs> but it will take some. It's a creative movement. I think yeah, it'll fit. Mirrors. Okay. Yeah, Showing up the distance from the mouth. Don't take it. I'll just use a heavier ball. <laughs> Are we? Um, do we rent the field still? I believe so. Say that again. Do we rent those fields still? Like the Frontier? Well, the Frontier and yeah, also the outside groups. Uh, um, I, you know, like an over 40. I believe so. I, I, baseball baseball or soccer I don't know exactly, league. but and I then believe it's soccer, you know, this, this, um, adult soccer, I think, there on, on occasion. Yeah. So, um, so you're not aware of any of that? As far as the renting, I had heard some. I had heard some talking about that. I, I'm not really that familiar with that part of the process. Okay. Um, but uh, I, you know, I definitely plan to familiarize myself with that. Yeah. I'd like to. I, you know, my plans are to kind of come in and you know, like, figure out where everything is and. Uh, See if I can kind of do things, create a process that mm -hmm. helps us to do things uh, in, a, in a quality way. Yeah. So, um, please. As far as the rentals, I do receive payments as treasurer for various organizations renting. So we have a revolving fund there, or it goes into the town's re uh, rec revolving account. It goes into rec. Okay, and. Um, Brian, I know you sent out a uh, a list of um, the, the income statements. Um, do you remember what the rec commission is? I meant to print that out. The balance in it? Yeah. Um, I want to say between 8 to 10,000 maybe, okay. if I had to guess. Okay. Don't hold me to that though. Well, so it's 8 to 10 and then there's 10 here. So I would imagine pretty good sum to move forward with. And that balance fluctuates. I mean, I think yeah. what we see for purchases is our, our jerseys, um, referee payments, um, probably some sports equipment yeah. that's purchased out of that fund. So that balance will fluctuate. Okay. Um, any uh, big capital things that, have, that are on the that are in the works for that area, or I didn't, I, you know, I didn't catch wind of anything yeah. um, so far. Um, that, so uh, basically, Jonathan just gave me the ball and said, "Run." Exactly. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, okay. Um, well, look, we wish all the, any any questions about the Recreation Commission, and uh, you know, we. You know, the children of the town, obviously, we spend a lot of money. Yeah. You know, um, we invest in them between the schools, the recreation commission, um, and mostly everything else. Okay. And I would hope that we're getting the value out of that from the recreation group. And um, just a little anecdotal piece on my part. Uh, I would like to see um, the value for people of Waitley, for their children, be very high, obviously. And to do that, I would think the Recreation Commission needs to um, have some kind of overarching umbrella of a statement as to what their goal is with each of these sports. <laughs> sportsmanship, fair play, absolutely that they can, that a child should be able to trust any adult at any time 
to know that they have their best interests at heart and their actions. And I think that's the value that we invest. Um, you hear some anecdotal things like, because we're, we're a small town. You know, we have a small elementary school, the recreation department is relatively small, everybody, all the kids know each other. And what happens from time to time is, you will get children in certain grades, certain kids, and we know what all happens. We've seen it happen a number of times. You get four or five kids together that all want to be on the same team. And, then, and they usually, the kids who may be a little better, a little more experienced, a little more athletic, then on top of that, you get their parents in bag of them to coach. Now the parents won't coach unless the kids all play together. The kids won't play together. And so there is this, there is this dynamic that occurs. Culture. And it's not good for sportsmanship. It's not good for showing kids how things should be. And as the leader in that area, <coughs> you have the ability to stop that and make sure that does not occur. And um, because we have a small community, someone like me hears that and everybody else. So it doesn't just stop at that team or in that sport, it goes out. And um, seen it before, and it'd be great if we didn't see it again. So I got off my soapbox, but that's where, that's where things stand. So, if you have one. Yes? I just had one, one question about the, the dugouts that were there, that, that are there. Um, I know there was a plan a couple of years ago um, to fix those dugouts up and move them over to where the ball field is, but uh, they're just, they're kind of falling apart. They're, people are using them for dumping trash, and it, there's, they're just kind of sitting there, and trees are growing up through them. So I just didn't know if there was any plan to, to move forward to do something with those dugouts. Is, I mean, it's, yeah. Right there in the parking lot too. Yeah, so. I'll I'll find out. Um, I know what you're talking about. The word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll find out. I thought we did too. Yeah. Maybe I'm not wrong. Uh, I thought yeah. there was well, surplus money well, well, for right? 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 waiting for right? anybody right? to want them. Yeah, but we appropriated money to build new ones, ones or something. Did they build the new ones? Yeah. <laughs> Question real quick. Yeah. Go. Someone who because, knows the answer. Because our zoning zoning bylaws. Require a 20 foot setback in the field that is close to um, prop personal property. We can't put them. We can't put them on the field where they want them. You can't. The first base side is pretty much on the property line of yeah. Ralph Olszewski's. Okay. So their intent was to put them in place, but since yeah. the town wanted to do that, and the uh, building inspector wouldn't give us the permit. The first baseline of the first field? So the yeah. Southern field, southernmost field. Southern field. Yeah. The southernmost field. The oh. situation is there's, for whatever reason, many, many years ago, the property ended up having a, a section of that frontage is all Ralph Olszewski's. Yeah, Ralph owns. So even bank. though you think you're at wow. Hurley Park, it's private property. So he owns the, uh, the hill? Yes. And, and, and all the way down on the flat. It's down. I'll have to stop. The that. town has attempted to purchase or try to negotiate with him. Oh, no. He doesn't want to sell. Yeah. Simple question. Wow. Simple question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thanks, Steve. Um, you can always move the field, right? Um, not very easily, but sure you can. Okay. So right. just uh, recommendations for next time. <coughs> okay. Um, give, give us an idea how many children are in what sports and what sports are driving your needs from a budget perspective um, and um, what you're looking for in terms of uh, uh, main maintaining the program, growing the program, and um, any other recommendations from the board as to what we can pass on as to what we want to see or what we'd like to see. Or, um, I think they, you know, basically they do a pretty good job with what they have, so. Absolutely. You know, um, I can't say enough about people that volunteer to coach teams and people that take the time out of their lives to give the kids <coughs> in our time. So we thank them all and um, 
We thank you for stepping up. And uh, we know, we, we know the whole program is going to go like this now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Nice to see you, Bert. Thank you. That's not too much pressure. Yeah. No. <laughs> not at all. Take care, Chief. Okay. Okay. Rec Commission. I guess we should go to. to Sessors? Sessors. Sessors, Cynthia. I think we should. I think we're all in agreement for Brian. Okay, Brian. What right. CRCX sheet am I looking for now? G -G. General Government. Lucky 13. <laughs> You find it and tell, me tell where you it where it is. Okay. Yes, yeah. like this far down. Oh. Okay. okay. General government assesses GG thirteen. <coughs> okay. I'm getting the hang of this now. Here we are. I found it before you did. All right. We're good. All right. Assesses. <sighs> Salary. Thanks for coming in. Okay. And uh, you want to run through this for us and give us an idea of where the highs are and um, where your increases are and why? Well, the chief increase um, is that I do need to have a new computer. The computer I'm using is about six, I think about six years old, and it's printer also. So a new printer and a new uh, desktop are the, other than that, there's very little change. Um, the education, which we, or professional development, I guess it's called, um, it's good to leave it in the line item, but now you can take the course online for any new assessors coming in, so mm -hmm. that hasn't been used, I don't believe, for a couple of years. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't spend a lot of money. The one thing which keeps going up is the cost of mapping, but I don't anticipate anything in this coming year. Okay. Um, now, the other thing, and I think <coughs> I'm reading across correctly, we put $3,000 in as a, con as a consultant for the APB, I see I misspelled appraisal, or somebody did. Um, we do probably have a pending case at the Appellate Tax uh, Bureau for the first time ever since I've been here, which is now 26 years. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what that's going to run. We've never had one in all that time. So, so um, is legal counsel involved with that? Yes, except that we have, have not hired the town Council. We went to special council for it. because it's uh, an assessor special problem. It's right. Not regular town right. council problem. Yep. Okay. So that three thousand is a guesstimate at what the lawyer will cost and what the um, we'll probably have to have a professional. Um, what do you call it? A, a, a appraisal. Yeah. Thank appraisal. you. Yeah, the appraisal. And uh, we may also have our consultant who we work with every year uh, on setting our tax rate. He may also uh, be part of it. So basically somebody is, you know, they, you valued their house at 450000 They say it's worth 250000 Or something and, like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just throwing, <laughs> yes. just saying that for ha -has, But then, and they're, they, you couldn't come to an agreement nope. with them. Okay. And if you're right, they pay the legal yeah, fees. I don't, you know, to tell you the truth, I really don't know that. I mean, I always assume that, but I don't know that. And I've heard that in general, or, or often what happens is that the ATB will do a compromise and pretty much come in between. No, yeah. So there's really no clear winner or loser, so I don't know what the... Just for information, sir. 
should we win? How does that, how does our take on that compare to our expense to get it? In other words, it does it make sense to actually go after this? No. Um, how many years would it take to pay the estimated cost out of the taxes that we would get? It's going to depend on what the settlement is, what the verdict is from ATV. I mean, if, if they don't mm -hmm. favor us and more of the property owner, well... Well, he said if we win. If, it were if, we, win. if we win. If, it be, <laughs> if we were to win the whole thing, there would be a difference in value of approximately... Four hundred thousand is that what we figured? Well, at least at least that. At is, least that. Is where, hmm. So do four hundred times our so, tax rate, and yeah. that would give you the idea. So within a year, six thousand. It a seems year. like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if the if your three thousand estimate is good. right, right. you should get it back right away. Yep. Yeah. So, so on. It's a good investment. We're also years. if you're going down this road. Because do you feel if we and don't we, go down this road, it sets a precedent? For sure. For others. Yes. And, okay. and their demand is so clearly out of line. Mm -hmm. So I it's mean, more or less waiting put a stake in the sand and saying this is how it is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And they refused to negotiate at all, so we didn't come down at all. Right. Okay. An attempt was made, but it wasn't. Oh yeah, we it definitely no, made an attempt. It had no, res no response. No results. No. Mm. Well, you represent the town, and I think the town's in back. Yeah. So. So I just want to, that three thousand really is. <coughs> that's a good figure. Yeah. That's, that's a one-time. That's thing. a figure that yeah. I wouldn't want to be it's, held to. It's fluid. It's fluid. Yeah. Okay. And we haven't heard from the ATB. I don't know. I mean, I don't know when, how long that'll be. This. Been, it's, it's been going on now for what about 18 months wow. okay. and will we collect in arrears if we win they are they are they're having to pay the tax at yeah. our rate at, this, at our assessment at this point okay so the money is coming in presumably well, it's two, two years we're talking about so far yeah and if it goes longer it could be three years at a, yeah. Yeah. The other the other part, like talking to the other thing we're we're not into yet is is a lot of towns have uh, utility agreements or taxes utility companies that are changing the way they value their property. Uh, and there's a consultant that's looking for towns to. <coughs> Hire him to come up with a different rate of assessing utility property. We're so far kind of staying out of that because we're not sure how much we're going to gain. Mm. Uh, what the benefit is, but and it's kind of a flat fee regardless of the size of the town. So you got Greenfield and Northampton and him paying the same fee as we would. So yeah. you know, do we want to support that consultant with our fee for? other towns no and he, he hasn't delivered a product yet to these maybe dozen towns that are work he's working with so so that's he working for up. himself he's himself. a consultant i don't know there's a field or somewhere yeah that's that's uh knows how to deal with utility companies so okay good luck it also depends on what the town has i mean towns uh, that have generating plants plants really stand to you know gain a lot yeah, right. and but some i think a place like waitley it's really debatable what mm -hmm. this what the difference would the be the only thing we have is solar i don't think well, that's even part of it it's not even part of it so no it's not it's not private yeah. just public utility so yeah so we're, we're probably, waiting to see what that happens ball game yet, no. yeah yeah after a year or two we know what, yeah, what he does what he does yeah. so yeah okay um any other points that you'd like to raise or I don't into? think so. I think everything is pretty clear yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. pretty much unchanging over the years. Yeah. So uh, but it's good to keep these these items listed that we don't really dip into very much, just mm -hmm. as a, a hedge for things like this ATB. 
Mm -hmm. Or uh, if suddenly the software uh, annual cost were to go up, or the mapping? Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you, you did make reference to the need for a new desktop printer and copier. I'm no, printer and, and, and the desktop. A desktop, PC, yeah. PC and a printer. Yeah. Right. Is that on this page? Where am I missing? Where I just, yeah. I don't actually see it on this page. I, thought I don't either. No, I, I think. No, I think because the, I was the under to, the understanding. The plan is to, is, is to purchase it this fiscal year. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Oh. That was it. So that's oh, why it's right. not, so right. not, right. not, not even it on the Not there. Plan. Yeah, I was thinking that it might be in the capital plan too, actually. So. No, not really. probably, yeah, it's probably not big enough to be capital. No, it's not big enough no, to be capital. No, longer computer is big enough to be capital. There's about $3,000 left in the computer repair account, so it works right through it. We're likely going to do it this year. Any further questions for the assessors? No. No. Same as. Thank okay. you very much for coming Thank in. Thank you. Greatly appreciate your time. <clears throat> okay. Oops. Who's next? Uh, Got lots of budgets. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. well, oh, okay. well, you've been sitting here the longest. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's been here longer. Been standing here the longest. Go. Jimmy's standing. You're sitting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let we'll we'll Jimmy go. It's up to you. What do you want to do? You Jimmy? can let him go. That chief. Let's go. All right. So can we give a number for Hold on. Hang on. Hold on. There's a number. Yes. We gotta three. go back to the syllabus here. Yes, I see it right there. Here's PS six. There it is. I know exactly where that stamp is. Oh, is it in that um, uh, dog box? Yep. Yeah. I'll pull it up here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Where are you from? Yeah, the drop box has all the other yes. Did you find it? Yeah. Which will be out of the same. Yeah, yeah. 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 next page. Yeah. Yeah. Just for all the time to see the focus. That's what you're doing. We're going to wait up in here. <laughs> it's in <laughs> DT. Right after the uh, send. Yes. Yes. Right after the send. Right after the send. Have you found it? No more double sided copy. I did. <laughs> right. No, I'm just going to look out with you oh, yeah. because please. we're not getting any younger. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Start talking. Go. All right. Um, as far as the budget goes, there's actually a decrease this year. I could just hit on the, the highlights of those uh, dues and meetings line, uh, $50 increase for. Uh, for annual dues, I listed the current, do you have the sheet there, but I listed current dues that are paid for on there. Um, office supplies went down $500. We have a better idea of what it costs to run the building now after running it for a couple of years. Prior to the last couple of years, it's been in the uh, general budget of the, of the town. So uh, this is just, now, now all the responsibilities are are uh, on me for the police department. Um, we also got somebody to do the floors. They did a better job and they're doing the floors for less less money, so we're able to reduce that. Um, postage, there's, other than uh, our citations that get mailed in and occasionally a couple other things, there's not too much that gets mailed out these days, so, um, so we dropped a little bit there from the postage. Uh, internet, Comcast, that went up, uh, $210. Reason for that is with now the uh, training room at the police station is emergency operations center, so we, we got cable and the TV put into that room. Um, so Lynn, Thanks, Lynn. Lynn was able to get the, the equipment, so mm -hmm. now we have to pay for the, for the service for that, so <laughs> uh, an additional cost there. Um, vehicle maintenance, we have two vehicles that are under warranty now, so um, we don't really require uh, major um, maintenance on them, just regular oil changes and things like that. So, um, so we drop that down. Um, hopefully, for the next the next couple of years, while they're still under warranty. Um, 
radar maintenance. That went up $50. That was just for increased cost of the annual radar calibration. It's one of those things that just seems to keep going up and up each year. And then the last thing was a professional development. Talked about it a little bit last year. That line hasn't really been touched for the last few years. Um, so I reduced it because there's no plan to move forward um, at this time with any continuing educational college classes. So that was that was reduced as well, which brought the total total reduction down uh, with nineteen hundred and fifteen dollars. I think it is, yeah, nineteen fifteen. So that's what the that's what the budget looks like. So that could go up depending on the salaries. What what happens with cost of living? But right now, the right. So salaries aren't are, figured into anybody's budget. Right? Yeah, that's not figured in. So that. That might raise it up a little bit. So. Do you have what you need? I mean, does this budget reflect? Currently, yes. Yep. Okay. So we're protected. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there, there is. This I've had some discussions with the select board about um, an additional position. I'm not sure if, if this is the time or the place to, to review that or get into that. Well, but it's not in your budget. It's, it's not in this budget, because I wasn't, I actually have two, two different budgets, one with the increase, one without, and uh, we decided to, to go with the, without because no decision was made yet as far as moving forward, how we're gonna move forward with the additional positions. So, so that's the one we're we'll moving forward with, the one that have it. And uh, how's everything else going? Good, it's been a busy start to the year, busy couple of months. Um, now, last time I remember getting together with you in a room with a lot of people, we were discussing what was going on with the sale of a business in town, mm -hmm. right? And at the outcome of that meeting, there was a decision made that an officer would be in that location. Mm -hmm on a regular basis. And that's obviously an expense that the town has to bear. And what what has happened to all that? Because one one it's a it's a they would hire a detail officer. So that wouldn't be an expense on the town. Okay. Um, two, it hasn't changed ownership yet, so that doesn't take effect. So we haven't we haven't the current owners are still still there. They they haven't taken ownership yet. There hasn't been a transfer of the business. So Okay, um, so I'll ask the select board, does that fact that we are not mandating what occurred at town on town floor be instituted with the current owner, does that place the town in any kind of liability moving forward with new owners, whether it's current, the proposed owners or future? And has well, that been, have you brought that <coughs> to town council to find out? They have to follow the, their bylaws for that type of business in town. And there were specifics that we identified that they had to follow. And whether, when the new owner or takes ownership of it, we're expecting them to follow all the requirements. Mm -hmm. I, I, and no, that's, yeah, yeah. That, that's what our attorney has also been telling us. So. Right. You laid out these requirements, and and they need to follow them. If not, well, I guess we call them in and find out what's going on or, or why. So the current oh, owner, yeah. the current owner, does not have to follow those same. Correct. Conditions. But could I add to that? One of the reasons why um, is was not very easy to put new conditions on the license for the current owner was because there was not much of a trail, a paper trail for uh, bad incidents happening there. My understanding is that we've had in just the last four months more incidents than we've had in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we can start looking at on license renewal to start putting conditions on the current owners. Because of that change, 
that there's actually more <coughs> stuff going on there that's being reported that we can point to and say, hey, there's a problem with public safety. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a position to be able to assert conditions. And I don't know that we have to wait until their uh, license is, is um, renewed. I think we can call them in at any time. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet. We haven't discussed it yet on one of our meetings. But maybe that's a good idea for us to bring that up at a meeting, because that's one thing that Jim has brought to our attention, is that there have been more calls Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, I don't remember the exact breakdown of how many were of, uh, you know, of various you know, levels, but in the past it was one per year, mm -hmm. and now it was uh, uh, many, you know, many more than one sure. within uh, three, four months. Mm -hmm. How so, often does their license need to be renewed? Once a year. Once a year. Have, have and there been that, a hearing? Recently? That was in December. It, was it doesn't have a hearing no, oh. um, necessary because it's just a renewal, um, but. At that time, we still didn't have the information of, oh, there have been a lot more police calls yeah. since that time. So that's probably a good thing for the select board to review and maybe get some input from town council on what kind of conditions might be appropriate given the kinds of calls that have come right, in. Right. No, I know it wasn't. And the, and the higher rate. Yeah. yeah. I know it's not this select board that was in place when that bylaw was passed <laughs> now on town floor but being how that right. it was passed on town floor and in position and was not was never enforced enforced does that put us in any kind of legal i believe they were already there at the time that it was passed yeah so so yeah so they've been there for 45 yeah, yeah. Plus years. Yeah. It, but but the, the bottom they line have, for as far as yeah. legal. 1975. Yeah. 75, 74, as, 75. Wow. Yeah. As far as legal risk goes, and correct me if, if I misstate this, if we decide to change something without a good reason, then we could be taken to court over First Amendment issues. And their attorney tends to win those cases because. Everybody believes in the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. So if we, however, if we have um, specific public safety issues, that's yeah. where we can put conditions on licenses. Okay. So that's why most of that discussion was about how we're gonna handle traffic, how we're sure. gonna handle public safety and so on. So yes. that may be something now, which wasn't true three or four months ago, that could be looked at a second time. Mm -hmm. My finance committee was, uh, you yeah. know, Kind of wondering whether we put ourselves in a position mm. where we'd be dealing with huge We're, legal fees. We are trying not to put ourselves in a position right. where we need to be huge. Okay. Um, just in a, in addition to yeah. that, not it's kind of a separate separate topic, but similar topic um, with the new regulations, recreational marijuana being legalized. Yeah. <clears throat> we've got um, a number of companies that have come into town um, looking for host agreements and we sit down with them, do security plans, look at their security plans. I just did one, another one last week. Yeah. Um, we do have one that looks like it's probably moving forward. Everything's been approved and it's um, for the Sugarloaf shops. Uh -huh. um, we, we have a plan with their security. That is gonna cause, uh, I don't wanna say a hardship, but we're gonna be dealing with traffic there um, to start with at least two or three officers that'll be paid by them um, just for, for traffic until we know what's going on. Just as an example, I spoke with um, East Hampton and North Hampton. <clears throat> as of last week, North Hampton just went from three officers a day, 24 hours a day, to three officers a day, 16 hours a day. So that's, that's what they were looking at. It's a busier facility. East Hampton's not as busy, yeah. mm -hmm. but North Hampton's looking at about on a, on a peak day, about 3,000 people per day. East Hampton's up in the six $700 range, so, so we'll, we'll definitely be seeing hundreds of people coming through there. Now, Greenfield's so, opening something, right? Yep, next, is it next week or the week after? April 2nd. April 2nd, well, they next have week. They already open, don't they, for? For uh, medical marijuana, yeah. same facility. They're just, yeah. they're, mm -hmm. they're doing recreational now. Yeah. And they're gonna be popping up everywhere, so those numbers are gonna go down. Yeah, there are about you know, we're not going to see lines down the street for miles and miles and miles, you know, come a year from now. But, 
but it is going to cause a, you know, a strain at, at the beginning when it first opens. So just so you know that that's that's kind of coming up. So if we get castaways and another business, and there's another business looking to come in, and you know, manufacturing growing facility that's looking at coming in, that's that's adding a lot of uh, a lot of stress on the on the agency. So. Any other questions, no. Chief? No. Any other thoughts? Anything else? No? That's it? Thanks. No. All right. That's Thanks perfect. again. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. <laughs> hey, Dan, uh, you don't go to the senior center. <laughs> <laughs> just have a car. Later we'll answer the bullet <laughs> and then answer. Thank God we have two offices here. here. <laughs> <laughs> it would take both of them to stop. Do <laughs> town clerk you first. Just pick up yeah, residents. Okay, residents. Okay, okay, let's do town clerk. Okay, that's GG7. You figured out how to use this thing? Oh, it's upside down. It's upside down. Well, the numbers are in order, which I appreciate. And then numbers are over on the other side, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, that's okay. We're good. Okay. Thirty dollars less. Thirty dollars less. Um, wow. There are some changes like from one account line to another. <coughs> uh, probably the major one is um, the postage yes. that's being taken out and put in yeah. under the town buildings. Um, all but $100. Sometimes I have FedEx or UPS that I have to do, so I left $100 in my budget. But because we now have the postage meter, it's now being taken care of at the, um, on the under the town building budget. Perfect. Um, Sky high. <laughs> the yeah. elections, this yes. would normally be an off year. Um, for 2020, I'll only have um, the presidential election and the town election. It would normally be an off year, but they are proposing early voting for the presidential primary. So that will add additional costs. So my election line only went down 400 rather than how it would normally go down on a, a non-election year. Um, let's see. Um, what else was there? Another 250 to for school? Um, yeah, that's just um, one. That must be just a just a yeah one one, one, one class. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because um, one year the in 2018 it was 15. Yeah, that was when I finished up at the um, yeah uh, academy. Um, and some of the others are uh, the archiving of records. I increased for 500. I do have some books that I'm still trying to get done. Um, some. My vitals records I put in special binders and things, and it, those are pretty costly, but they are um, archival quality, so they um, mm -hmm. they meet those standards for archival. Are, are you all caught up with that? Because we only hear this well, we, once a year. We, so. we, I am mainly caught up with everything, and this is yeah. just to continue what the re new records that I have. Okay. Um, okay. You should check out the vault before you leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. Um, so that's about nice. it. My boards and committees program, that's a maintenance fee on that program. Um, we're still updating it. Um, we're getting there. Janet and I work on it when we get a chance. Um, the other thing, um, under elections, I was also asking if I could raise my election worker salaries to actually minimum wage. Um, but yeah, but in what, what's going to be 15 bucks an hour here? Well, right, right now they are at. Let's see. Uh, Is that the constables? No, I'm no, sorry. they're more than that. We're very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> My election workers right now get 975. Mm. So. I, I think we can raise it to minimum wage. <laughs> are, they, are they complaining? They are in the election <laughs> line, but um, I have had a couple wonder how come they weren't getting. You have a hard time finding people. Not, not too <laughs> bad. The no, pay should be this one no, then. but Tell um, them they'll get minimum wage. And I wage. do have some people who don't want to get paid at all. So some some volunteers. Love those people. Some volunteers, yes. oh. but and that's I, allowable. They can donate oh, services if they okay. like. 
they get minimum wage, but they don't get fed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The people with minimum wage should not go get the seniors. buffet. <laughs> yeah, they're the, the senior centers. So that's pretty much uh, my counselor budget. All right. Okay, and then we would move on to the treasurer collector. Oh, well, Harper's is, payroll. Who's that? Oh, payroll. Harper's payroll is mine. That's our service that um, pays the, pays the does our um, payroll. Our, I weekly um, payroll, and they also do our W twos and our ten ninety fives. Okay. They're getting cheaper. They are, you know, we kind of overestimated the first few times we used them. So, yeah. um, let's see. And my treasurer collector is GG eleven. Is the payroll every week or every other? Every, every other week. Other. Yeah. I got GG eleven treasurer collector. Yep. Um, again, my budget actually went down. A lot of that is due to postage being taken out of my budget mm -hmm. and put into the, the uh, town building budget. One thing that did go up is I need a new printer. My printer is mm -hmm. not functioning very well. I can well. understand why it's not a web my technology web. account yeah. or something here pretty soon with all this. But my printer. The printer that I'm using was my old town clerk printer. It's it's was provided by the state, free of charge. Oh, and it's about 18 years old. Okay. Wow. So I That's think I've gotten five. my money's worth off. Yeah, it doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> yeah. Are the uh, the photocopiers that we have are they things that can be networked so that they act as a printer? They we yes. They should, Most as of my, much as they cost. Yeah. yeah. We we do our big stuff. Oh, okay. That way. And and the second, a, a separate printer is needed because some well, computers can't be networked. I have tax bills and I'm not sure that I can network my tax bills. Oh, and so. This would be for tax bills and oh, okay. that kind of stuff. So that yeah. computer's not networked. Right. Uh, well, it is probably. networked, but the program that I have, I don't think I can network that program oh, into okay. this. Yeah, I should bring so. it next time. You should. Um, and I also have uh, a line for an OPEB the OPEB program, every two years we have to do a OPEB actuary and it costs us $750 every two years. So I've added that into my budget. What do they do for you? Well, I input all our um, employees that have health insurance, all the data, and then they do some input, some economic assumptions into that and they calculate what we have for an OPEB liability. So right now we're right in the ballpark of a million dollars for our oh. OPEB. Really? Wow. So. That's, what, that's what we should have saved up. That's what that's we should have, what saved, we have up. saved up. Yeah, I know. Sure. Sure. No that's one ever does. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. No. But uh, you know, we've been making a dent on it each, yeah. each year, so. That's helpful. Other than that, um, the budget's pretty. I mean, I'm tax pretty, takings. Tax takings. I did up that for the last two years. I've been working at getting the tax. I have a number of accounts that I can't go after right now. They're in bankruptcy. But those that I can go after, my tax attorney is doing um, the final legwork in order to do the actual foreclosure stage on a few properties. It takes forever to do any it, of these things. It does. You know, we've been screwing around with some of these things for yep. 10 and 15 years. Well, mo the oldest ones are in bankruptcy, mm -hmm. so I can't do anything with them. Um, other than that, there are a few, well, I should clarify that. I have tax takings on quite a few properties. Um, some people are pay paying towards those yeah. and getting them paid off. Um, tax attorney is going to work on those that haven't made any effort to pay them off. Give them their final letters <coughs> and then we'll go forward with foreclosure. Yeah. So, but it's a costly, it's $500 to file in land court with each parcel and so it's a costly, you want to make sure you've work got <coughs> the parcels right. worth Well, the owner on knowns and the little parcels aren't worth it, but there are some parcels oh, there are that, some. Are, that are pretty heavy duty ones. So. 
So that's my tax taking. Um, let's see, what other ones do I have here? Emergency management. Emergency management. Oh, that could be all your titles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where is that? Emergency management would be in the public safety section, I think. Yeah. PS. That one's not. PS7. $500, five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's about five hundred dollars. Um, so. Nine fifty, sorry, nine fifty to nine fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Now, didn't you overspend it when we had the fuel spill and we got reimbursed? We got reimbursed. We did. Okay. Um, um, we in a timely manner. Well, somewhat timely. <laughs> Uh, the bill that was submitted to the insurance company was forty thousand nine hundred and fifty-four dollars, I think it was. That included um, all the different organizations that submitted bills to us, and then we billed the the insurance company. I got the check about a month ago, and I paid them. I actually they're being the payments are being processed at this on um, this next warrant for. All the entities that were involved. So, um, yes, including the town of Waitley. So we'll perfect. be getting sixty-seven hundred, I think, back reimbursed. Yep. So, granted, it's not the same fiscal year, but no, at but least it's being reimbursed. So. Goes in the back in the general fund. Yep. Um, so I think, uh, other than insurance issues, I don't know if you want to tackle those or that Brian tackle those. Well. I think we should we might as well speak on health insurance, I guess. Okay. Health insurance. Give me a number, Brian. Uh, yeah. IB. Ooh. Two one eight one zero five nine six five two. One. The insurances are changing. The plans are changing. They're um, increasing copays. Um, talking about group health, or group, about? group health insurance. Okay. Yeah, um, increasing the co-pays. However, the premiums are remaining the same. So, which last year they were talking about doing both, increasing premiums and increasing co-pays. Mm -hmm. um, so this is good news, bad news situation. Yeah. Um, the actual budget. I have the old version here. <laughs> is is we're asking for less in that budget line because last year we were at this point in time we were anticipating both a yeah. premium increase and um, and the copays. So um, this year we know that the premiums are not going to be increasing, so that's why we lowered that budget. Unless they change your mind at the end, like unless the yeah. last year. Yeah. <laughs> that could happen. Okay. So. And that on the second page, I did. We've got a breakdown of each group. So you've got your active school um, and active town members, and then your retirees and from both the school and the town. Just to give you an idea of where most of the policies fall and how the split is between the schools and okay. um, the town. And I, uh, we always add an extra plan or two just to cover. Last year we had quite a few additions, mm -hmm. um, so we always budget an extra plan or two. So this budget does tend to have a little balance in it if, if those aren't used. Um, if they are used, then you hear from me as a reserve fund yeah. transfer. Yeah. So. Um, What's the mandatory for offering? Is it three? Um, basically, we offer a PPO and an HMO. And when it comes to retirees, can you refresh our memory again as to what our what the town responsibility is? We only benefit the retiree, um, and we pay 50% of that premium. Um, the spouse can stay on our plan, but the 
it's the employee's responsibility to pay the difference between the if it if they're on our regular but they pay the difference between the uh, single and the employee plus one if they're still not eligible for Medicare at that point so if they are eligible for Medicare then they they can again stay on the Medicaid uh, the Medicare plan the right. supplemental that we have but the uh, spouse has to pay it a hundred percent and is that how does that sit within the union I mean I what is the I to tell you the truth, I'm not sure what the other towns do. Yeah. I'm not sure if they benefit the, the uh, spouse as well or not. I think most, uh, everyone is at 50%. I yeah. don't, um, okay. but I don't think they, I, I don't know how much, uh, how many other towns benefit the spouse. Any other any questions for uh, Lynn regarding insurance? You. Okay. Well, not much you really do about it. No, not a lot you're going to do about it. No, nope. do the best you no. can. Yeah. But you know, <coughs> the Medicare is kind of a straightforward calculation. However, it gets thrown <coughs> off by um, pays that aren't necessarily included in the overall payroll that we look at, like uh, detail pay or um, the school choice money. It's not included in the payroll, so, you know, it, it's a crapshoot on whether we've got enough, and I, I have come to you on occasion, and right. that's why I, I did up at $1,900 this year, hoping that finally, I, every year I've come to you and asked for like $400 more in that account. Yeah. Um, so I upped it um, the nineteen hundred, hoping that this will cover it this time. Because it's a one point six five percent. You would think it would be easy to calculate, but because of the um, having these kind of unknown salaries, school yeah. choice, uh, how many details are going to be, mm -hmm. you know, it does kind of throw things off. Say so that just um, regarding property insurance. Me. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. All right. We can, we can, we can we'll, work, we'll work on that later. I thought you did it all, in, to be honest with you. Well, I used, you to, used to when I had my I old hat on, yes. I think everything else might be Ryan's. Um, I mean, the life insurance is what it is. We benefit. The yeah. town pays 50% uh, of the, the 50, I mean, the $5,000 life insurance policy, which is $7.10, so the town pays $3.55. Towards a month towards it for each individual. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty standard. And unemployment is another crapshoot. You, you just don't know how many unemployment claims you're yeah, going to get in right. a year. So. Well, you got 16,000 in there. But yeah. Look, there's look years you don't 17. use any of it. There are years when we don't use any of it. Okay. Right. Last year I did put 16,000 in because there was an anticipated yeah. situation at the school. Um, as it was, I think that person got hired somewhere else rather quickly because I, so I didn't pay never saw a, huge um, a huge amount. I did pay some, yeah. but it wasn't the 16000 that I had budgeted. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Anybody? All set. Are we good? Set. Yep. Good. Lynn? Well, thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks Thank for your you. patience. Thank you. Job well done again. <laughs> See See. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we are. Um, let me see. Insurance benefits done. Oh wait, no. Brian. Yeah. Brian, do you want to pipe in with any insurance issues that um, you want to talk about? Property and liability insurance. Yeah. Huh. Um, I just want to just a question. Um, regarding property and liability insurance changes with the new town hall update. Yep. Um, how has that impacted our responsibility there? So if you look on this, <coughs> on this new sheet, I put this in today, there's a, there's a breakdown. This is IB1. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, I got it. Breakdown of the increase. Um, 
the increase in premiums for attributed attributed to the town hall was thirty four hundred dollars this past fiscal year. So, and for a while we had the building off. Uh, last year we had the building off. It was insured by the contractor under a builder's risk policy, yeah. but now it's back on at a um, uh, higher value. Okay. And we talked. We had a. We talked about the reserve fund transfer that we had done for uh, the increase in the elementary school mm -hmm. that wasn't anticipated and wasn't received very well, at least by me, in terms of the abruptness of the of the change, yep. um, the reevaluation of the school building based on Mass mm -hmm. School Building Authority uh, standards. Um, well, we shouldn't have replaced that roof. Yeah. Shouldn't have built such a nice school. Yeah. That's something we don't have a lot of control over. They, the mass, whatever it is, says the school is worth X amount of money. Yep. You've got to insure it for that. The, that. In, the insure, Maya, the insurance company, sets, okay. calculates their rates based on mass school building authority, square footage, cap yep. construction costs. Okay, so it's not just losses. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one thing that so the center school, it depends really what, on hap what happens with the center school in terms of, um, in terms of its eventual um, demise. disposition. I don't want to say demise. <laughs> um, it's, it's eventual disposition. So there's a vacant building policy on it now. Um, and we've, so the, what we were hoping to do was to do, uh, take us through the rest of the fiscal year. Well, they made us pay for the whole thing and they're going to, they're gonna. They're gonna give. They're gonna reimburse us whenever we, whenever we uh, take it off the insurance if that's what we do. But if we don't and we leave it on, then twelve months from now we would have to pay those costs again for that policy. So that's why that's in there. If we don't think we're gonna have that building or, or want to insure it at that date, we could take that out of the budget. But I'm just not. Comfortable. Have no idea how that's gonna play out. Um, well, it begs to. Uh Thanks to the question, where are we in the process of doing something with that building? I mean, yeah. Well, there's several things going on in doing it. Well, it's it's planning yeah. is, well, other than, yeah, we're going to still eat it and kind of maintain it minimum we can, but planning is looking at changing the yeah. bylaws to allow uh, other kind of uses that maybe don't conform to all the zoning requirements. Mm -hmm. Store commission is wants to have a role in what happens with the building. No, no gas stations. Though. Retail, retail marijuana. Well, we, we don't know whatever is proposed. Yeah. We have no idea, and and yeah. we just applied for a grant to help us uh, uh, decide what kind of uh, kind of use use mm -hmm. would be best, most Good. appropriate for Good. for not only that, but I think the Demile property was also in there for that. Okay. One. Hey, let's talk about this insurance so. again. So the state comes in and tells you how much the building is worth. What do they guarantee you if something goes wrong? No, Maya does our insurance company. Right, but, but what, do, what do they guarantee you if something goes wrong? What's it in? What? Where are you at? I mean, if something goes wrong, it burns down. The full replacement costs. At what at what level are they at? at? What do you mean? What there is no no way there has to be some rider built into that. There's no way they're going to guarantee you that how much it costs to be built right now. There's no way. I believe they do. I can't believe there's, any insurer there's, there's would do that unless you're buying for, unless you're buying into that. So for four thousand dollars, we well, are getting which one are you talking about? The, the school. school. Well, you're talking about the school. school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, center school no, or elementary school. school. He means the, the elementary, elementary school. school. The elementary He's school, right. The center school. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see any insurance company ever working like that. I'll double, I can double check for you. Well, for the center what, school, they, they came up with a value. They came up with a value to, they did. to insure it for. Yeah. And so that's replacement then. Right. Whether it's assessed that much or actual value, yeah. <laughs> nobody knows, or I guess we don't care. But that's what mm -hmm. they said it is. I thought the insurance was because there might be liability issues. If it's empty. Is that, if it's empty and I'm sure that's it. And, and not in decays and I don't know, mm -hmm. bricks start falling off of it or something. Yeah. You gotta keep it heated. It's like the it's like the blue school when we had yeah. when that was empty. And the lights are on. And the lights are on. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Okay. All we right. did have a discussion at a board of selectmen meeting that 
if you go to YouTube, we can get the, the FCAT um, complete version of it. But I did, that we, we have talked about it kind of in this context after the insurance had to be bought. Like what kind of things can we do? And, and the ideas were all over the place. One thing that I personally would like to know, when I look at that particular parcel, what I see is a, a building that really can't be rehabilitated. I mean, somebody could move in there and they'd have to pour lots of money into it, but you can't make it energy efficient. Um, there's just too much stuff wrong with it. Yeah. The piece of land it's on, on the other hand, is a beautiful hill that's a great place for uh, a park, for, you know, for, you know just to, to, to give sort of a general idea of what could be done with it. I would really hate to sell it to someone and just have them you know, demolish the building and put up a McDonald's. I think and the zoning in this town won't allow that. Don't well, I, yeah, that, that's an that's an extreme. But, but Chick Fil A, but, but can't no, have a you, drive up. You, I, I was chatting with, with mm. Judy Marklin about this by email today, and she said, yes, it's in a historic district and everything, and there's lots of things that might um, kind of nudge people towards you know preserving the building rather than destroying it. But there's nothing illegal about demolishing the building if you're the owner of the building. Mm -hmm. And if the town is the owner of the building, then of course there's a process that probably involves town meeting votes and so on. Yeah. Um, but what I'm sensing, and I've only talked to a few people about it, is that people felt more about the town hall, I think because of its age. People who yep. feel nostalgic about the center school, mm -hmm. um, Less so because of the condition it's in, maybe. So and the I like I, I don't. Always been in. Yeah, and yeah. so and I. Okay, I didn't go to school there. Lots of people in this room probably went to school there. I don't know how people would feel if we seriously thought about demolishing it. But I'd like to know what people think well, about the prospect of demolishing that because the town hall could be rehabilitated, and made energy efficient and useful. I don't think you can make the same case for the center school. But at the same time, I understand that could, uh, demolition couldn't happen if people just feel like they want to keep that building. But you would also have to have. You would have to have, have, have the expertise. Yeah. So Go in there, evaluate, and make the case for, you know, the inability to rehab it. Um, yeah, I think the, the energy committees looked at that in, in, in great detail. Oh, they have. As far as as far as making it energy efficient, that's pretty much not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But but anyways, I, I, I put that out there as a. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how to start a town wide conversation on this, um, but maybe this is a place to, to start to just ask people what what do you really think? What should what would be a good thing to do for that? We already town. started. You got till 2020 when the insurance runs out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let me just say I, I I don't completely agree with Joyce. I mean that's her view. Yeah. I, oh, that's uh, true. Yes. So the, the opinion. I have expressed. sentimental value there because I went to school there all grades. You yeah. are all year. You and, graduated and, from that school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I know. And I think that there is it, it can be repurposed not for public use because for public housing or public buildings. You need to meet building code for everything, for the letter of the T, and there's more right. requirements right. for the handicapped and whatever. Mm -hmm. For private use, I think that can be can be remodeled for private use. Somebody wants to put a residence in there, or, or a two-family apartment, you can you can do that within the structure. I will say it, it, it's not cheap. Whenever you remodel, it does get expensive. Uh, uh, if if the town was serious, if we were serious, and we guess we haven't decided right. uh, whether to, to uh, demolish the building or not, if we made a decision to demolish it, we wouldn't pay the four thousand insurance thing, because that's all we're doing. We're protecting the building, because I I think that it's more marketable if the building is presented in the condition it is. If it's safe, it, it's used. The utilities are there; they can be used. All the windows are there. Mm -hmm. So far, you know, you, you, all that stuff is, is still in the building. So that's why we're insuring it because we think we would get more value from it if it maintained some condition. If it didn't, well, 
then let's forget insurance and just level it. I, I, I just don't feel that that's. I, 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 if you've ever been down to the Oxbow, on, down to the Oxbow in Northampton, on yeah. that road that leads to the Oxbow, yeah. there is an old elementary school, an old Northampton elementary school on that road. An attorney bought it, yeah. rehabbed it. That's his home. Yeah. yeah. And did, you know, a remarkable gym, right? You've seen it? Yep. Um, if, if you're looking at cost for a house to put a new yeah. residential up, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it probably is cheaper to demolish and build something new there. But if people want a historic value, historic building, and some of the the features of historic building, the wood, original wood floors, the, the brick walls, and, and all the structure of, of the roof and the architecture of it, yeah, you know, some people think there's a value to that, and mm -hmm. it can be maintained and remodeled. Yeah, like I say, it's not going to be cheap. Remodeling or usually no. costs you the same or more than, than building new. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we could get a so, residence back on the tax rolls. Yeah, plus yeah, it's on the tax right? rolls yeah. if it's a... Why don't you just put a, a survey letter on the back of the scoop to be deposited in the Waitley drop off point here. To let anybody that, that, that circulates to everybody. That. Just put a sheet of paper that yeah. says we would like We're input working. as to what townspeople would like to do with the building. Please fill this form out and drop it off at the town office. And then well, we'll I, I think take care of your stuff. Yeah. And we're a little hesitant in doing that until we see if we get grant money for this that may help us do that in a more formal well, way, I guess. No, or just to, to, to find, I mean, it doesn't cost much of anything to put that no, you in can, the school. No, you can do that. For, and, uh, that and, might and, give you some different ideas that you don't have any thought of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. and that's a good word. All right, let's move on. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's move on. Good, good discussion. Um, I'll answer any What do we have next, Brian? What? And we'll answer any I'll questions. That okay. We have. There's a lot of remaining ones. I'll answer any questions. How come Keith's here? This meeting or next meeting? He's here for, asleep. for the I'm personnel here. committee Just, recommendation. Oh, okay. I believe. Just um, should we help him out? Sure. And try to try to deal with that now. Sure. Okay. So there's a, a short memo in your packet. Let's do. Which, uh, which, which packet? A new where? packet. Right here, bottom one. Good pickup. Um, Brian found that. I won't take credit for it. He's fast. Yeah. Very fast. Um, okay. So we have a 2.5% cost of living adjustment. Fiscal year 2020. Discussed by the select board, no vote taken. Personnel committee? Probably do them one at a time. Let's talk about Okay. <clears throat> All righty. Let's, let's uh, open for discussion. Personnel committee, recommendation at 2.5%. Let's uh, start the ball rolling. Does anybody want to address how we got to that number, why we got to that number, and what that number means in terms of Cost to the town. Brian can address them. Oh, I got the cost fund. Okay. Over here. He needs a bigger desk. Yeah. I, I, think, need a desk. I think we're all going to have <laughs> those tables. We're all going to be at those tables. We're going to be opened up. <laughs> so, based on mm -hmm. FY19 total salaries, the cost of living adjustment of, of two and a half. Um, it's an additional sixteen thousand four hundred seventy-nine dollars. I can hand these out if people want to, but so what was that number again? Sixteen thousand four hundred seventy-nine dollars. <coughs> so then Tom's going to tell us how we got there. We looked at some data, and my issue is that we look at data that is from the Boston Nashua area, which. I think it has absolutely nothing to do with the cost of living around here. But that's the data we have, that's what we have available. There's not a lot of <clears throat> cost of living data for around here. The other thing we looked at was what the other towns around us were doing. We do have <clears throat> almost all the towns answered that. 
it's, it's some of them. Yeah. Yep. So, and it ranged anywhere from one and a half to three percent. And I think last year we gave two and a half. Two and a, uh, last year was two, two and a quarter. quarter. So, <coughs> okay. I remember there were a lot of two and a halfs in that range. There were. Between three and one yep. and a half. Yeah. Okay. So, and we went with the two and a half. Okay. So you went with the two and a half. Um, Is that based on a weighted average or? It's the random it would number. certainly be a weighted average or a median. It's, yeah, it's in the middle. Yeah. It's a random number. Is it that, that also? reflects the two and a quarter we did last year in what did way the other towns that we the decision making the process was very similar last year there was a lot of split between two and 2.5 so we you went two and a quarter. We why didn't we go two and a quarter this year because there wasn't a lot of like two percent two and a half percent two and a, there wasn't a lot of that there was like a lot of two and a half percent three percent a one percent or one and a half percent. Yeah, one and a half is it the was, lowest. There was a real big. There's a big spike right at two and a half percent. Well, my opinion is we, we just can't keep continuing doing two and a half percent every year. Well, sustainable. I, I I think it would be interesting. <clears throat> well, do we have um, a view of what merit raises? are in the town. Are there any? I don't think the, the only salary adjustment we made was to Keith's, and that was because he took on more responsibility. We have longevity. We have longevity. Yes, Keith? I just, I'll, I'd like to just speak as the chairman of the personnel committee, and just, and maybe not everybody's here, what here is aware of how we come about things and in the past we were at a point where we would compare ourselves to Deerfield we would compare ourselves to some of the other towns we would come in here and we would hear comments saying how can you compare us we can't be compared to Deerfield they're not like us mm -hmm. so we went back to the drawing board we went and we looked at criteria that we felt would be making us compatible to others we went and looked at population, we looked at tax rate, we looked at per capita income, um, those were the biggest ones, so what, they, what towns had for industry. We, we went out in the entire western Massachusetts communities and we scored how we lined up with those other communities. We then readjusted the communities that we want, we feel are compatible to us. And we feel that when we come in here and ask for raises, we can defend, and it can be de defended on town meeting floor as to why we're comparing Waitley to this, these towns now. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, the only reason we could say we're comparing ourselves to Deerfield is because they were next to us. Yep. Now we have more criteria as to how we, def how we do our survey. As far as, you know, the comment about merit, one of the things that's so much different with government versus the private sector is everything's public. When a raise is given to any town employee or any public employee, everybody knows about it. When you have a private sector and you, you have a, a negotiation with your supervisor, your boss, you can be working with merits a lot easier. When you come out of that meeting with your supervisor, the first thing you don't do is run out and tell everybody and the whole rest of the employees, I just got a heck of a raise. You didn't, you know, that's, we don't have that kind of option. It's all out there on the table. Um, so right. when it comes to us making a, we've discussed merit in the past and it's one of those things where it just doesn't seem to fit with it's municipal government. Um, Steps are the same, same thing way. like with you know when I know a lot of times nobody likes to hear us using the word cola but that's how like social security works that's how government seems to work with when when they are making adjustments um, and so I get you and I think we've had this we, we've had this kind of discussion mm -hmm. before and, and you make some great points there's, there's no question public employment is not like private no there's no doubt about it. 
Um, but, it's always a but, you know. Um, the public side, you don't have that privacy envelope. You, you don't have that protection, okay? Why? Because you work for everybody. Private side, you have that privacy, but all your employers know what you make. Everybody that's paying you, anybody, everybody that manages you. Uh, it could be layers and layers and layers, so it's not, yeah, maybe your next door neighbor doesn't know what you're making, but everybody that's involved in your organization that's above your above level you, yes. knows. Um, so, are they alike? No, but um, I think at some point sometime, and that's a discussion downstream that Merrick raises, um, you know, I, you know. It's just not something that uh, that municipal yeah. does. But they could have a role. They may not now, but they could have a role. Well, my question was, two week, are there any merit raise, raises? No. Okay, so there, that does, we are not dealing with, so it's only no. COLA. Only a COLA. So COLA is the one and only raise on top of longevity. Right. Right? I think that you're right. Okay. So, um, so when you put longevity in there, what does that percentage come out to? Do, the longevity was that different done? for everybody. Yeah. The longevity is included in those budgets already. Yeah. In the Are, yeah. They're included in what? In the budget. In the budget. Right. Longevity yeah. is included in each budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. but it's still a raise. It's it's oh, it's yeah. it's income. Yeah. The longer you're with right. the town, so the percent will be different. It raises. It's a but flat the rate. It's a flat rate. It's, it's a flat rate, rate that's yeah. not going up. It's yeah. not. It's not an increase. No. Yeah. It's not like it's an. It's there's no steps yeah. or no there's increase in it. Well, if somebody only makes a hundred dollars a year, then it's a hundred percent bonus, right? But so it depends on what they make. Okay. There's I mean, not very much longevity eligible employees. We only have a few. Your question, though, was what is the difference in this increase between just a straight cola and a cola with the longevity? Right. Okay. That's, that's where I get to that, that answer. Yeah. We well, understand. I'm, I'm, not understand. I'm, not understanding. I'm not understanding the question. That's, I, I feel like Brian, I don't. Uh, okay, we, 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 we pay a sal salary. <clears throat> yeah. We pay a longevity that's within that salary. Yep. Uh, not based on merit, not based on No, it's job, based on longevity. Not, right, right <clears throat> exactly. Not based on job description. Nope. Okay, so it's based not, on how long you've been here. Not performance, okay. not anything. If so you're, so I, th I think the cutoff is what? Was it 10 years? Is that when it started? No. I, it's either 10 or 15. It was 10. It was 10. It was 10. So After 10, 10 years, you get 250 bucks. And it doesn't change. Yeah. So you can be here for 20 years. You still, still get the 200. You still get the 250. Right. right. So it does not change at all. No. Okay. Right. So There's no progressive increase. Mm -hmm. No. The other department down the street. So 2.5 is not on top the of those. Gets, very different. They get a much bigger step increase. Yeah. Right? Ours is very just different. Flat. That's what started this whole. That is right. Longevity and nonsense. Sort of the school. Sort of made a compromise <laughs> and the school. The last contract they gave. They had two employees coming up on 35 years, and they leaped them into outer space for 35 <coughs> years, and they weren't leaving. No, no. Well, that's another discussion that yeah. we can have. But here, you know, to get back to the 2.5, um, I see it. It's out there. Um, I don't think it's something we're ready to vote on, or give anything more than a. Um, you know how we feel about it in opinion any more do we have any one else that would like to share um dan's already jumped in no, i didn't yeah, think it's sustainable think yeah, I, I think it's it, it's reasonable and, and i say that compared to what social security is getting this year is like 2.8 percent 
Uh, last year, I think Social Security was like 1.6, 1 1.8. 1 mm -hmm. We uh, did look at Social Security. And, and prior years, Social Security was zero for two or three years in a row. Mm -hmm. I think in the future, we should pay may, maybe more attention to what Social Security is doing, because there's a lot of people in Social Security, a lot in this town on there, mm -hmm. that are seeing no raise or very minimal. And yeah, I understand uh, town employees may be worth it and we need to consider them, but uh, just because all these other towns are going two or three percent, I think we need to really look at what our, what our measures is. What, what, what are you using to justify that? Besides what Deerfield, Conway, and Sunderland are doing, I think we need to look beyond that. And see, we're not comparing them right well, now. Well, whoever you whoever you're comparing yeah. them in the in the in the state, I, I guess you need, you need I think to. What he's trying to say is is in the town of Windy, if you've got 75 percent people working, and you got 25 percent that are on Social Security, right? So the the working class is going to keep getting that cola raise, whereas the 25 percent of the seniors isn't going to get it every year. We went for a number of years without right. any. Yeah, three years without anything. And, and, and I think this is part of what should be I drawn agree. into that equation that you're trying to, where you're trying to come up with a whole, because you're, you're doing it strictly with the payrolls of working people in right. the other towns. Right, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This town has a lot more non-payroll yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And I think they have to be considered somehow on how their monies are being spent. Mm -hmm. That's my yeah. I agree with yeah. you. That twenty-five percent is maybe low for for, yeah, uh, for non-working people, and I think I think it's that's more increasing that. every year. I mean, twenty years from now, that's going to be half and half of the town, probably or less. But I think we also have to consider, as far as getting employees, that's if we get a reputation uh, as not paying increases and not getting yeah. raises, then we're not going to attract people. That's cool. And, 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 We've and had I, that discussion yeah. already. That one's come and gone. Yeah. But we talked about it all last year. Yeah, we did. Well, but, we but, it's, but it's very relevant because I, I think part relevant. of our job yeah. is to make sure that the, the business of the relevant. town gets but, done well. And we can't do that if we train up a nice employee and then some other town snaps them up because they're willing to pay more. Or if, I we think don't, we, or if we don't get a good employee we, because we get we, a bad reputation yeah, mm -hmm. for paying. Mm -hmm. and, 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 they, and that <clears throat> kind of an employee can do a lot of damage that costs us a hell of a lot more money yeah. than 2.5% mm -hmm. would have cost us to keep a good employee. And, 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 and I don't think you should shut down this conversation just because you had it last year. Yeah. Okay, we also had well, the conversation also, of, of I didn't get 2.5% in the private sector no. last year as well. So that so I, I think it is really important. I think we have awesome employees and when we talk about merit, I think longevity is merit because when people aren't doing their job, they you know, they get reviewed and they get uh, you know they We don't ever let anybody go, but well, we no, we, we the, no. I well we it, it's a personnel each issue. Department so. is supposed to review their employees. We, that's in the there are employees policy. that we no longer have anymore who are performing badly. And yes. their bad performance led to them leaving. Now, whether they were fired Asked out or the door or they left on their own. That, it, okay, right. so that's my point. We have, I think, really, really awesome employees. And we can't say that they have to be on Social Security that they have to be tied to social I don't think that's a good idea to tie them to social security I understand the argument that some fraction of our town is tied to social security uh, but I, I'm just saying I don't think that's a realistic um, approach to take if our job is to see that our town is run well run efficiently and run for the benefit of all the people okay that's that, okay. that's all I just, okay, something good. had to be said about I, our employees you may think some excellent points I I agree we have a tremendous highway department I live up on the west side of town you have a bad snowstorm you drive from West Waitley to Conway and you'll see the difference um, there's no doubt about it uh, right Tom yeah okay um, and um, 
Dan's point about individuals on Social Security um, within the town, and they're here, that number is being drawn from that number, no matter how you want to look at it. You know, you want more for the town, these people on fixed incomes mm -hmm. yeah. have to put their share in, so it is. So it may not be the only comparative, mm -hmm. but I think it, to his yeah. point, it should be a piece. A piece of it, right, it, not it, the it only. Sh it should definitely be a piece. Right. Is 2.5 a killer? No. Is anybody getting rich on 2.5? No. Is 2.5 <coughs> going to help us keep everybody in town working? It'll help. We'll, It'll help. We'll yeah. guarantee if it. If somebody's going to leave, they're going to leave. Right. So. My, um, my chief concern with employment in this town is succession planning. And does the select board have that in place? Is there somebody he's training in case he hits the lottery and he's gone? No. Is there somebody he's training so yes. Yes. when Keith gives him money from the lottery that he hit and he leaves, um, is, that, is that in place? And so on and so forth, right through all the departments in town. A succession planning is, is key, and without it, it's very tough to we do. Don't have, we don't have, we don't have, we have very little of that. Yes, yeah. 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 but, but, but if we place. stop having any sort of <coughs> we're not big enough to have a lot of succession it. planning, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. But no, you don't have to be big. You don't have to, no. have, you don't have, to have a major one, but if no. Keith dropped dead tonight, what would you do? There's, there's someone there he that would make sure the job gets done. Yeah, I'd be, I'm real more realistic. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. I'm more realistic. You'd have to hire somebody. You'd have to hire somebody out of. Somebody could continue doing what he's doing yep. for a short period of time. What are those budgets? When it comes down to the budgets, you know, we, we would have to hire somebody right. out of house to take yep. his place. Yep. If so, something happens to Jim, mm -hmm. I'm sure Don can take over. Without skipping a beat, how come Don's trying to give him a little shove? <laughs> I never know. Some shove. No, but that's um, you know we're the, I don't, okay. there aren't okay. enough big department. You know the water department. Mm -hmm. Something happens to Wayne. Yeah. Bill is still well a bat the backup guy. So yeah. then we'd have to go through this whole process again. Mm -hmm. Next time we don't do that, we're not going to be able to have somebody part-time like we have we are gonna have to hire somebody if Wayne gets mad and quits we're gonna have to hire somebody 40 hours a week to do his job and it's gonna cost a lot of money you better treat him right from now on well we try to tell you uh, but look you know that's something that every department and that's right because when Bill left it was like it was a scramble yep to get Wayne up to speed and you know everybody had all the fingers crossed and you know thank god it finally happened but um if we're going to pay employees and if we're going to have an employee pay payroll and line items for employees then each of these departments should have some kind of succession planning to make sure if the top guy goes who jumps in his seat and that that would have to give us some insurance. All right. Before we okay. move on to, to the yeah. next thing, yeah, on yeah. This, I have okay. one more thing to say. All right. Go ahead. Another reason, in my mind, that we went with the two and a half percent was because this year we made no salary adjustments to anyone's salary. Last year, Fred called me on the carpet because we gave three or four people in town a salary adjustment and you wanted to know if we were going to be doing that every year. We did not do that. That was one another reason why I went with the two and a half percent. I hate spending money. I give them one percent and if they don't like it, too bad. I think that was one of our other board members. It wasn't you? <laughs> Somebody did. Uh, one of our other board members did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean you, well, you either, the, you, you're either going to give them two and a half percent or you're going to go through each yeah. employee yeah. and say, well, he's doing a little more now, so let's give him another, yeah. you know, 500 yeah. a year or whatever it is. Yeah. And so you, you, 
you can't keep treading water. You gotta try to keep moving forward, even if it's only two and a half percent at a time. But you gotta keep moving forward. Okay. Next. Any other comments on the 2.5% increase? Okay. Um, is this next? Yeah. Just for just for my knowledge, in terms of preparing budgets for you guys, when do you when do you anticipate making a decision on that? On the two point five? Yeah. Because we have one more we have one more meeting after this. We'll make it tonight. scheduled. Um, so it looks like you're looking for a vote on these items on this page anyway. It would be useful for. Most of them would be for budgeting, for so preparing I, the final budgets for review at the next meeting would be useful. And let's okay. make a decision I think on except these yeah, that each one at a time. Go right through it. All right, let's take the first one. Um, do we have a motion on the 2.5 percent? I move we accept the 2.5 percent. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor, raise right. your hand. has to be noted here that um, the one thing we don't see in this whole raise scenario that we see in other budgets is we can't look retrospectively at what we've done. You know, it was 2.25 percent, 2.25 last, last year. We have, a, we have that. Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. Starting in 2012. Okay. Um, 217 was two. Okay, so. You know, I mean. I like that. Paper. I think it's a good overall increase, I think. Average. Yeah. 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 Means fast. You know, it's fast. It's gonna happen. Okay, done. All right. All right, what's next? Personnel committee voted to recommend an increase in the administrative. Assistant position from 24 hours a week to 30 hours a week for 18 weeks. Purpose of this increase is to ensure adequate staffing during the busiest time of the year, <coughs> especially budget season. Who's the administrative assistant? <laughs> no, she's the, the assistant to, to the administrative, administrative assistant. What happened in the other yeah. years? No, he's the administrator. He's the administrator. Right. Okay. She's just so what's happening now is yep. when Amy attends these mm -hmm. um, joint meetings and that sometimes go three hours, and then and we attend a select board time. meeting, well, that's six hours, so yeah, sure. she's only working three hours. Yeah. So yeah. we can pay her for the meeting. She gets another day in the office, so that would right. be very helpful. Yeah, See what happens when you do a good job? Mm -hmm. Do a good job. See what happens? <laughs> She's, she's the uh, succession plan. Succession so. plan. <laughs> she doesn't know, oh, 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 oh. She doesn't know it. That one. She doesn't know it yet, yeah, but you better watch she, your back. She does now. <laughs> that one backfired. Yeah, right? That one backfired go. on somebody. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. All right we, got our, we got our stuff together. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's vote on that one. Okay. I make a motion. We increase the administrative assistant well, position much, from 24 to 30 weeks. Yet. What's it going to cost? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Okay. If three doesn't need a vote. The finance committee. That's an amendment to the yeah, personnel, personnel policy. Personnel policy. Excellent. Four. Personnel committee voted to change the highway superintendent job description that makes the position responsible for town-owned buildings. So we're gonna hire a town building custodian who's going to work a minimal amount of hours but that custodian needs to be responsible to somebody and somebody needs to keep an eye on the buildings that we own like the center school off the center school had a broken pipe frozen pipe furnace went off or something oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And, you know I mean he just happened to stop there and Saw it or whatever. Saw the frozen so, yeah. windows. Yeah. Well, yeah, frost on the windows. But I mean, you know, somebody's got to be <coughs> ultimately responsible for the buildings. So. Right. Right. Does um, the Smike's house fall under that, or is that under a maintenance agreement? Separate. That would be under the 
Okay. Renewable. Renewable every year management agreement. Yes, right, I've heard about that. By default, yeah, we've been through it. No, I just didn't know it's an old town owned building. Yeah. But the town hall is certainly, I mean, there's already been issues. I think uh, we've had issues like why, why there was odors in the in women's the room, which was, a, you know, so there's, it was a simple thing. there's the been heating, issues the, with the heating, heating system. Doesn't there, work. There's, so when, when people the go there sweats. to use the building at night and they have no heat or whatever. They, they got to call somebody. Right. No question. So, I make a motion. We approve that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Personnel Committee. Personnel Committee voted to recommend the town build the town hire. Yeah, that's we posted the job. We don't need to deal no. with that. No, that's not us. Uh, we just we don't need to do with that deal with that either. Uh, chief of police for three percent. Okay, that's that's, that's a selectman's issue. Right. Okay. Um, At this time. Okay. That's it for the first. Brian, anything, yep. anything else you wanna? Um, where where are we going now? How much of my years in paper? <laughs> Look at all this. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I. We don't need to do this tonight, but I just want to cover these three papers that were sent out. Um, one is Town of Whaley. This was an email as well. Yes, I Town of Whaley it. Operating Enterprise Fund Budgets. Yep. Then there's another okay. Another one that's Town of Whaley Operating Enterprise Fund Budgets Fiscal Year 2020. Yep, yep. That's, lands that's printed landscape. And then there's budget projections based on budget projections yep on the existing budget if you turn to the one two three the fourth page on that well they're on both sides there pal so. oh well i have single sided uh, not me i got uh, two you know, sides so, so what are we looking page, for uh, that happens when you come around. the back of page two then my map is correct yeah, long term, yeah. it says proposition two and a half Nope. Yeah, I'm just single sided too, so I don't know what to do. Okay. This one? No, I think it's. You can have it. What's the take? I got it. Looks like that. You're making stuff up. I don't think I have any pages that look like that. Let's look over there. What's the number? What's the page number on the upper left? Two. BP? Yeah. BP. What's your projection? Two. And then proposition 2.5 under that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Next year I'm using different color paper. This is what this is what has to be done. This is what we did in the past. All of these things have to be drilled. So we have to have three they all should Amy. be hole punched. So when, I, when we come in here, we we that copy we replace what we have, what's new, so that we get rid of the old ones. If we increase our hours, she'll have time to do that. Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, she does now. We just did that. <coughs> okay. Um, he's gonna share mine. So, okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're, we're good. Why did you want us to look at this? That's good. Let's go. Where are we? I just want to show you. So okay. this is this is the projection. For proposition two and a half. Go, if you go down, so go down to actual tax levy. It's the one in bold. Yep. One, two, three. That's what the actual tax levy would be based on this budget. Um, and that included, this includes a projected two and a half percent COLA. Levy percent of levy limit. See the percentage underneath that? Yep. If that continues to decrease, that's a good thing. Yes. Because that means we're we're spending um, less we're spending than, less we could than our levy limit is increasing. Yep. yep. Um, property tax impact is the next part. Is the next table down. Yep. 
Average single family assessed value, that's one, two, three, four. Second, from the bottom, 309, 202, that's the average single family assessed value in Waitley in FY19. We don't know what it is for 20. Look at the last three rows there, that's average single family tax bill. The, the dollar change for that would be projected at $68, a 1.4% increase over last year. Those numbers are going to fluctuate because so far for, from what we have for state aid is just the governor's budget. We don't have a house budget, we don't have a senate budget, so we don't have a, any certainty as to how the state aid will, will turn out. Right now, in the governor's budget, they have completely taken out charter, so charter tuition payments we would not make and charter tuition reimbursement we wouldn't receive. Okay. That's a that's a positive for the town because we currently pay out more in charter tuition than we get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how that will play out. So let me ask you this, and this you probably might might so I understand the actual tax levy and the percentage. So what and I understand going down is a good thing, but what do you would you consider going down is too good a thing? Yeah, that's one of one of my. Is there a bad side to this? No. To what? To yeah. The, to this. To our, really. We're constantly going lower. For your percent. So this is your. That's the the tax levy. That's the percent of your levy limit. Right. Yeah. And we could go up that twenty percent over that. But what is there a number that it's, we shouldn't look at? What's a comfortable percentage? Not seventy. Not ninety. For, a, for for your percent of the levy limit, yeah. you know what's what's the benchmark? Yeah, well, um, I guess that's a good. good. I ha I'd have to look that up for you. Okay. Because I'm sure what's, there, I'm what's, sure we're going to have people say, well, why don't we get up to ninety? No, you don't want to be. Then you don't want to. You don't I know. I understand that. And then you're going to have people say, well, why don't we get down to seventy? Right. Yeah. I, I understand. We, that. I do the, understand. The way that. to look at it is, we have a cushion. Right. Right. You know, and, and at this point, I can't even be careful. <laughs> That's right. We have a cushion, That's right. have a cushion I, of taxability. Right. right. Taxability. We don't have a cushion we don't have of a money. Cushion of we, have cash. A, we have a cushion it's of not taxability. Cash, it's taxability. Right. Right. From, from that meeting at Frontier, Deerfield clearly doesn't so have when, a cushion. So when, exactly. that, when the school burns down and they don't. And we pay 75%. Yeah, that's right. We'll have a cushion to do it, get it. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, if we have a diet, I'll get you 100%. We have the ability to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you worry. Right. Yeah, there, right. there, there are other towns that do not have any kind of cushion. Right. You know that. Every year, know right that. up against their, yeah. their right. levy limits. Hey, and that used to be us. That used Honestly. to be us. It was in, us. In 2015, it was us. We were at 96.3% of our levy limits. that was us. And that's override. that was us. Yeah, and then okay. it's over, over right then. Okay. Right. So you can take a look at these sheets in your in your free time. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, I you're, already did. You guys awesome. have found tons of that. Probably get that one later. Sure. Um, but that's where we stand sort of in the big picture. Okay. Which we'll want to talk about more next meeting when we okay. actually take votes, I believe, right? Okay. Um, it's two weeks. So it's a finance the finance committee only meeting. Oh, okay. Is but it's still yeah. a public meeting. It is still a public meeting. They love attendees. I know. They, they welcome participation. Yeah. You just have to sit in the comfy chairs. This this one. Do you anticipate um, Okay, I so have to answer it later. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna school's pretty much written in stone, right? I mean I <coughs> see the question of why it's twice as much here yeah. than there, than there. Mm -hmm. for subs. Yeah. Um, and the question what they're asking about the school psychologist, I had somebody tell me that she does both psychology part time and counselor part time. I believe that's what they told us. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. that. That's, that's what that's, 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 that's that is what they told, told us. Me. And if we reduce her hours. She, she would somebody. only be psychologist, yeah. and she could only work with children right. that have IEPs. Right. She wasn't going to do it. It would not be able to do any guidance. Correct. Okay. Correct. But I do believe that the individual that did the budget for the schools found it unusual that for an yeah. elementary school we had a full-time psychologist. But she's not. She's 
part time. No. Well, oh, no. five, but, but yeah, 50, 50 guys. A full time, a full -time, -time, -time in that two people in that role. Is one yeah. person doing two people's jobs half time? Mm -hmm. Yes. I guess you could look at it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Two, some, yeah. One person having two half time yeah. jobs. Like one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. And then, didn't you have a question about subs? I did. I said, why is it twice as much money in Wheatley as compared to Conway? Do we have that many more people taking time off? Well, I think that's it's the same size that, school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think. You think the weather? We don't have a there, chance so. to talk to the schools right now. But who's keeping track of that? Who's keeping track of why? Why not? Not who's keeping track of it. Why are we paying twice as much? Well, well, there should be a standard. They're like, okay, we got a person calling out every day. This is how much money we need, and if somebody really gets sick, we need more. What do you mean a day? Out. A day rate? We're paying twice as much on a day rate? No, no, no. No, we're totally budgeting twice. We're budgeting, budgeting, we're budgeting, budgeting twice as much because we're anticipating more, a greater more, need more people. Yeah. for subs. Do we have older okay. teachers here? Or I mean, yeah. I don't. Maybe we line? anticipated uh, maternity Maybe. leave. We should have known that. Though. But wait, we, we should know that. That's, You're right. that's okay. Then we can say okay. That's fine. Um, I'll see if I can find that answer. For you. There you go. And I, I think it'd be very interesting to find out if. There is a, a greater number of sick days on a Friday. Uh, <laughs> only when no, early it's, release. Yeah, it's only early, early release. release. That's what I Which mean. Which would be exactly. eliminated, I would Early say release year. is pushing them to phone sick. I would, I would bet dollars to donuts on it. Yeah. So that's an issue. How do you go about that's asking that question? <laughs> How do you ask that question? Well, you ask that question because you have management in the oh, school yeah. that's supposed to be looking at calendars, mm -hmm. and when people call in, it gets marked in. I mean, that's simple. I don't simple. think that's a big issue of Whaley, but I, mm -hmm. I'm pretty quite sure it is in other schools. You think so? It's called, yeah, the people don't like clockwork. Some people don't like clockwork. Okay. But I don't think it's a big deal. Not here? Okay, you good with that? All right, now I'm fine. I pay attention. Right, right, that's fine, then. If you're good with it, it's good. Anything okay. else? Anything else? No. I make a motion we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. See you later.